As a general rule of thumb, images prepared for web and digital output should be formatted in RGB color mode, while images prepared for print should use CMYK color mode. Both color modes are considered process build color modes. It is recommended to always work in RGB color mode and only convert to CMYK when you're preparing for your final output. RGB is additive color theory. Wavelengths of red, green, and blue light are combined to display all available colors in the RGB color mode. CMYK is subtractive color theory. Layers of transparent cyan, magenta, yellow, and black ink are layered onto paper using dots called halftones to produce finished images. Looking at the graphic on the right-hand side of the slide is illustrating three possible RGB color modes. Each of these modes outlines the specific color gamut it can produce. These are measured and standardized into what are called color profiles. In the graph here, there is Pro Photo, Adobe, and sRGB. Notice how each has a different color space and gamut. It's also showing the CMYK color gamut when printing on matte paper. Commercially printed images can also utilize spot colors. These are literal ink colors instead of process build colors. Instead of printing with some combination of CMYK to make orange, I could use orange ink. The orange ink is a spot color. In addition, some inkjet printers contain more ink colors than just CMYK, like our, like our Canon PIXMA Pro 1 printers on campus. They contain 12 inks, um, expanding the possible output, output color gamut. Images should be left in RGB color mode when printing to these types of printers because of their expanded gamut. Our Canon PIXMA Pro 1 printers on campus contain the following ink colors. They've got light gray, photo black, dark gray, magenta, photo cyan, gray, light gray, yellow, red, photo magenta, cyan, and a color optimizer. That's a lot of inks. Yeah, that is a lot of inks. Sometimes we see images on screen that can't physically be reproduced because the color exists in RGB color space but not in the CMYK color space or our output color mode. These colors are considered to be out of gamut and are replaced with the closest color that is in gamut. That usually means it becomes duller when printed in CMYK. This is where color management comes into play. Now, as a Photoshop user, it's really important to have an understanding of digital color, so we need to talk some more about this. We mentioned that when you have an out of gamut color in an image, that color will be replaced with the closest color in gamut when output. The gamut is defined by the color space and profile. Here are two examples on this slide that illustrate the common color profiles. Take a close look and find the Adobe RGB profile on both diagrams. You can see that there are lots of bright green colors available in Adobe RGB and not in the sRGB. If my image had one of these green colors in Adobe RGB, but then I output to file in sRGB, all of those nice bright green colors would be replaced with the closest bright green available in the sRGB profile. Color management is needed to control the consistency and quality of images when output. Different displays and various printing processes will produce images differently color-wise, causing inconsistencies in the way that we see the image. Inconsistencies can occur in a variety of ways. They can occur when viewing web images on different display devices, so your computer monitor, or web browsers, when using a, con a calibrated display versus an uncalibrated display, viewing a CMYK image on an RGB display device or an RGB image printed on a CMYK printer, printing an image on different printers like laser or toner-based printers versus inkjet or commercial printing processes or presses like offset lithography, screen printing, and flexography, and viewing colors that are out of gamut. To help explain this, I like to give the example of going into Best Buy or Costco where you have a bunch of different TVs set up. If you take a close look, you can see that even though they all have the same show on, the color, brightness, contrast all look different from one TV to the next, which is crazy. To help maintain consistency for output, it is recommended that you calibrate the device that you will use. When calibrating a device, there are, a certain, there are certain best practices to follow, which depend on the device itself. For example, when calibrating a commercial printing press, test prints are used to gauge the density of ink being applied and adjustments are made until the test print matches and measures the standard required for that particular printing process. 
When calibrating a display, like a computer monitor or external light measurement tool should be used, like the color monkey shown in the slide that you're seeing right now. This is used to measure and adjust the white or brightest point, the black or darkest point, and the gamma or neutral gray settings. These settings can set your calibration needs. For example, commercial printers use, like to use 5000 Kelvin for standard white light, and commercial photographers usually prefer 6500 Kelvin. We would like to note that display calibration is not a requirement for ART 1280 students, but if you are interested in learning more about the topic, you can watch the video on the next slide. This topic is covered more in more detail in our advanced Photoshop classes. And so we cannot play the video in the slideshow, and so we're going to embed it into the playlist. So when this video ends, the very next video that you're going to see is a video that explains the basic process of calibrating your display. And you can watch that if, you're, if it's something that you're interested in at this point in your Photoshop career.